one degree off in temperature, and a 5,000-pound spring shatters like glass. These industrial coils support railway cars and mining equipment through millions of compression cycles. The secret? Transforming steel's molecular structure through extreme heat and precision cooling. Join us inside the factory to see how raw wire becomes an engineering powerhouse. The process begins with material selection. For heavy load springs, manufacturers typically use high carbon steel wire or chrome vanadium alloy steel. The carbon content ranges from 0.6 to 0.7%, which provides the necessary strength and elasticity. Chrome vanadium adds corrosion resistance and increases tensile strength to over 200,000 PSI. The wire arrives in large coils, already drawn to precise diameters. For heavy-duty applications, wire thickness typically ranges from 10 millimeters to 50 millimeters. Each batch undergoes quality inspection using spectrometers to verify the exact chemical composition. Any deviation from specifications means the entire batch gets rejected because even small imperfections will cause premature failure under heavy loads. Before coiling can begin, the wire must be perfectly straightened. The raw wire comes with natural curvature for being stored on large spools. Industrial straightening machines feed the wire through a series of precisely aligned rollers. These rollers apply controlled pressure from alternating angles, removing the curved memory from the steel. Now we move to the coiling machine. Modern CNC spring coilers are computer controlled with incredible precision. The operator inputs the spring specifications, wire diameter, coil diameter, number of coils, pitch between coils, and total spring length. The machine has several critical components. The wire feed mechanism pulls the straightened wire from the supply at a controlled rate. Coiling tools, typically made from hardened tool steel, are positioned to shape the wire as it feeds through. For heavy-duty springs, these tools must withstand enormous forces without deflecting. The mandrel, or arbor, determines the inner diameter of the spring. For a spring with a 100 mm outer diameter and 20 mm wire, the mandrel would be 60 mm. The coiling process introduces significant internal stresses in the metal. The outer surface of each wire experiences tension while the inner surface is compressed. Without treatment, these stresses would cause the spring to deform or fail prematurely. The springs go into a stress relief furnace heated to approximately 400 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the steel's crystalline structure relaxes without changing the overall shape. The springs remain in the furnace for 30 to 45 minutes depending on wire thickness. This process reduces internal stresses by up to 90% while maintaining the coiled shape. Here's where the magic happens. The springs must be hardened to achieve the strength needed for heavy loads. They're loaded onto racks and moved to the hardening furnace heated to between 830 and 870 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the steel's crystalline structure transforms to austenite, a face-centered cubic structure that's essential for hardening. The springs soak at this temperature for 20 to 30 minutes to ensure uniform heating throughout the wire thickness. 
Timing is critical. Too short and the center won't fully transform. Too long and excessive grain growth weakens the steel. Then comes the quench. The springs are rapidly plunged into an oil bath heated to about 60 degrees Celsius. The rapid cooling, at rates exceeding 100 degrees per second, locks the austenite into martensite, an extremely hard but brittle crystalline structure. You can hear the violent boiling and see the flames as the oil vaporizes from the hot metal surface. The quenching must be uniform. If one side cools faster, the spring will distort. Industrial quench tanks use agitation systems to circulate oil around all surfaces simultaneously. Fresh from the quench, the springs are incredibly hard, but also dangerously brittle. A hardness test would show around 65 on the Rockwell C scale, but the spring would shatter under load like glass. Tempering solves this problem. The springs return to a frontis, this time at a much lower temperature, typically 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. This temperature range depends on the desired final properties. Higher tempering temperatures produce tougher but slightly softer springs. Lower temperatures maintain more hardness but less ductility. During tempering, some of the brittle martensite transforms into tempered martensite, which combines hardness with flexibility. The springs hold at this temperature for one to two hours. The process is carefully monitored because temperature variations of just 10 degrees can significantly affect the final properties. After tempering, the springs cool slowly to room temperature. The final hardness typically measures 42 to 52 Rockwell C providing the perfect balance of strength and resilience for heavy load applications. To maximize fatigue life, heavy-duty springs undergo shot peening. This process bombards the spring surface with millions of tiny steel or ceramic balls at high velocity. Each impact creates a small dimple, plastically deforming the surface. The springs rotate inside a peening chamber while streams of shot pellets blast every surface. This seems counterintuitive, but the process introduces beneficial compressive stresses in the surface layer. Since most spring failures start with surface cracks, these compressive stresses prevent crack initiation and propagation. Shot peening can increase the fatigue life of heavy-duty springs by 200 to 300 percent. The process takes 10 to 15 minutes per batch. Afterward, the springs have a distinctive matte gray surface texture from the millions of tiny impacts. New springs don't immediately reach their design dimensions. They need to be set. The springs are compressed beyond their normal working length, typically to solid height where all coils touch. This pre-stressing removes any remaining dimensional instability. Hydraulic presses apply the setting force, compressing multiple springs simultaneously. 
the springs hold at maximum compression for 30 seconds, then release. This cycle may repeat two or three times. After setting, the springs maintain consistent dimensions throughout their service life. Every heavy-duty spring undergoes rigorous inspection. Dimensional measurements verify the free height, coil diameter, and wire diameter against specifications. Coordinate measuring machines scan the springs to ensure they meet tolerances. Load testing is critical. Springs are compressed to various heights while load cells measure the resistance force. The spring rate must match calculations within 5%. For a spring designed to support 5,000 pounds at 50 millimeters of compression, the actual load at that compression must fall between 4,750 and 5,250 pounds. Hardness testing confirms proper heat treatment. A Rockwell tester takes readings at multiple points on each spring. All readings must fall within the specified range. Springs also undergo visual inspection for surface defects, cracks, or irregularities that could cause failure. Any spring that fails any test is scrapped and recycled. The approved springs receive protective coatings, typically zinc plating, powder coating, or oil coating, to prevent corrosion during storage and service. They're then packaged and shipped to equipment manufacturers worldwide, ready to handle thousands of compression cycles under extreme loads.